<clears throat> What's up, class? Mr. Young here. We've got another exciting, wonderful, engaging, fantastic lesson here. We're on to a new topic today. Up till now, we've been simplifying rational expressions. Today, we're going to be solving rational equations. What's the difference between a rational expression that we've been doing so far and a rational equation that we're doing today? Uh, well, rational expressions are inside rational equations. You use rational expressions to make up a rational equation. So what is a rational equation? It's an equation, obviously. It's an equation. But it has at least one rational expression. Got at least one of those. Okay. If you see an equation with a rational expression in it, you found a rational equation. Okay, let's remind ourselves what is a rational expression and what is an equation. What is a rational expression? It's a ratio. It's in the name, right? Ratio is in the name rational. Uh, but another word for ratio is fraction. And you guys might be more familiar with fractions. But it's a fraction where the numerator and denominator are both polynomials. These are exactly the sort of things we've been doing the last three lessons of rational expression. Polynomial. They're both polynomials, the numerator and denominator. And then what is an equation? An equation is a mathematical relationship. So how do you have relationships in math? Well, you need equal signs. Equal signs tell you how one side of an equation is, is related to the other side. It says that they're equal to each other. So if you see an equal sign, you have an equation. And if that equation has rational expressions in it, you have a rational equation. So here's a typical rational equation. Let's label some of the parts that are relevant. Okay. So we need at least one rational expression. Here's we've got two. We've got two. These are both Rational expressions. Both rational expressions. Now, we also have an equal sign. Which means we're dealing with an equation. So it's an equation with rational expressions. This is a rational equation. So the point of today is trying to solve them which means try to figure out what the variable in them equals. Um, how are we going to solve them? Five steps. We're going to factor everything. And I'm talking about those polynomials in the numerators and denominators. We're going to get rid of the denominators next. Get rid of those denominators. We can do that two ways. One, we can cancel matching factors when they are in the same rational expression. When they're in the same fraction, you can cancel matching factors. And two, you can multiply both sides of your rational equation by the least common denominator. Okay. After that, you're going to multiply everything if you can. If there's anything to multiply, at this stage, you want to multiply it, multiply everything. Then you want to get everything on one side. How are you going to do that? You're going to add or subtract it. Add, subtract, everything to one side, which means all the numbers and terms are on one side, and on the other side is just zero. And when you get zero on the other side, then you can solve the polynomial. You're going to get a polynomial at the end, and then when it's all on one side, you can solve it. Okay, so that was a lot of steps, and you don't know what any of it looks like now, so let's run through some examples. We're going to look at this smaller rational equation right here as our first example. Now, here's a trick. In this video, and in this homework that you're going to get today, in the video and the homework, today, the first step is already done. There's going to be nothing to factor, which means today in this lesson and later on in the homework that you get today, you had to skip the first step. You can go right to the second step. Okay, everything's already factored. So that's going to be the case here. So we're skipping right to the second step, and we want to cancel our denominator. We need to get rid of our denominators. Our denominators here are 6 and 2 and 3. It's the bottom number in the fractions. Okay. How do we get rid of them? We can cancel matching factors. Okay. Are there any matching factors in any of these fractions? 
I don't think so. There are not. They look all to be prime to me. Um, and we multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. So least common denominator. What's the least common denominator of 6 and 2 and 3? Well, I would say 6 because 6 goes into 6 once and 2 goes into 6 three times and 3 goes into 6 twice. So all three of these numbers go into 6. And you can't get any smaller than 6. You can't get less than 6. That's the least part. Because 6 is 6, so you can't get smaller than 6. So 6 is my least common denominator. So uh, we're on uh, 2 here. This is, um, let's, I wrote 2, too small. This is step 2. We're skipping step 1. My least common denominator is 6. So I'll multiply 6 by both sides of the equation. So inside I've got both sides of the equation. Okay. Now, um, I need to simplify that a little bit more so everything cancels. Uh, I've got 6x. That 6 is going to distribute to both of the fractions in here. Okay, is equal to 6. Three. And then um, I need to simplify this. So 6 over 6 cancels to 1. I just got x plus 3 is equal to 2x. Okay. So now, can I multiply anything? That's my third step. It doesn't look like there's anything to multiply here. So I'm going to go right to step 4. By the way, that's step 3. Nothing to multiply. Step four, can I add and subtract everything to one side? I can do that pretty easily. There's a couple ways to do this. I can pick whatever side I want to. I'm going to pick this side. I'm going to subtract a negative 2 from both sides of the equation, or a negative 2x, sorry, from both sides of the equation. So I've got x plus negative 2x is going to be negative x plus 3 is equal to 2x minus 2x is 0. Okay, now I've got everything on one side and a 0 on the other side, so I can solve that polynomial. And if I solve the polynomial, I'm going to add x to both sides. I've got 3 is equal to x. 3 is equal to x. 